Hey Strat fans, did you know that in most Total War games, the outcome of battle can be decided by a single well-executed maneuver, but that sometimes it's a culmination of many other factors that win battles and campaigns. Stick around to cover more mind-blowing insights that will take your gameplay to the next level. Welcome everyone, it's me, Colonel Strat, the Strategy Extraordinary, and today we're going to dive deep into the art of Total War games. I'm a seasoned strategist with a passion for mastering the intricate complexities of strategic warfare. Today I'm excited to share with you some of my top tips for becoming unstoppable on the battlefield. Now let's address the common challenges that many players face in Total War games. From managing resources to coordinating large armies, there are numerous obstacles that can hinder your path to victory. But fear not, as I'm here to guide you through overcoming these challenges and dominating the battlefield. Many campaigns drag on with an increasing amount of hostile factions that turn the tide against you insanely fast. Learning to master certain tricks on the campaign map and battles help mitigate this. To become an unstoppable force in Total War, you need to master a variety of strategies and tactics. Whether it's flanking maneuvers, siege warfare, or diplomatic finesse, I'll provide you with the tools you need to outsmart your opponents. I'll show you my top six tricks that help me master the art of Total War games. Number one is to master the art of ambushes. The first key tactic on the campaign map is to master the use of ambush stance. An ambush stance looks your something like this. Done. So it's a stance you can take, takes 25% of your movement speed, and you'll be hidden until you're discovered or battle initiated, so you always have a percentage chance up here, and you can increase that chance through skills. Usually there'll be like this one yep and you'll get more ambush six chance up to 20 for the defense chance and 30 percent for the success chance as well as vanguard deployment and then you can buff this up with certain things as well some lords have special abilities that can boost it there are some special items that boost it too that's more for the lords that are made for ambushes like skaven lords but anybody can do this really but certain factions are better at it than others another big part of using ambush stance is to create like a choke point see i'm at war with these skaven here i know that they usually have a couple armies over here at this point waiting an ambush right here covering this whole area if one of them tries to march through here they'll get ambushed and i could take them out before they actually get over here and overwhelm my force of dread spears and stuff let's see if they catch the bait unfortunately our ambush was foiled even though it was foiled they did reveal themselves the skaven army so even though you ambush just gets foiled sometimes don't let that let you down because it can still reveal the enemy forces and allow you to be able to tap them down that helped me a lot because then i was able to isolate this skaven army and defeat them. So that helped out a lot even though I wasn't able to actually ambush them. It helped out a lot because it revealed them so that we could locate them because this is really good against ambush heavy factions like Skaven or Beastmen. Even if you don't actually ambush them and you fail it, you can still locate where they are and defeat them if it turns out to be good. But if you locate them and they're out, out of there, then you just have to try again. Reposition yourself because that's what the whole thing about chance is. You don't know for sure. When it does happen, it's good. You can use this to isolate and destroy stronger armies to give you an edge in the campaign. Tip number two is to learn your chosen faction's strengths and learn how to overcome their weaknesses. For instance, the dwarves here. Their strengths are, of course, their heavy armor, their high-hitting melee infantry, their extremely heavy-hitting gunpowder units, and their formidable artillery. Those are their strengths because they just do so well. But their weaknesses are, of course, their speed. Their speed is very much a weakness. Most dwarf units don't even get past 30 for speed. Their other major weaknesses are on the campaign map where they struggle with gold and economy challenges. Also maintaining their armies because their armies are very, very expensive. But the dwarves are very solid in the fact that you can overcome their speed challenges by causing the enemy to lose their speed or by positioning your artillery in a position that can really do some damage like right here with these organ guns. We're positioned on the high ground so we're going to be able to fire up and over our guys and hit the enemy really hard, as well as maintaining aerial superiority, because the orcs here don't really have a lot of aerial units, so we maintain aerial superiority with our thunder barge, and using our thunderers here, they're able to really open fire and destroy them. And that's why we send in our hammerers to do the job and help. These are heavy hitters that will really help us take care of our vulnerable flanks with our insanely powerful artillery that's getting flanked by enemy fast units. So that's where the enemy is a problem for us is with their fast units. But even then, we decimated their front line here. So their front line is almost nothing. And then, of course, their enemy units are so flimsy that we're able to just comp them up so easily. And even then, 
Even though our Thunderers did get clapped by these Squig Hoppers, the Squig Hoppers themselves got clapped by our Hammerers that just destroyed them. So you have to make sure you have a nice balance between units that can defend against fast units with the Dwarves. Defensive strategies are the optimal way to play them. Not just because of how slow they are, but because of how heavily armored they are. They're really, really amplified for defense. But of course, they can do attack just fine. They are heavily armored Dwarves, so they can do really well. You just gotta be careful because if you overextend yourself like I did, you'll find yourself in a hot mess with a lot of your dwarves dying needless deaths like the Grudge Rakers here, where I should have kept them behind the line and brought them out or put them in a formation like a square or something to protect against the Squig Hoppers because the Squig Hoppers were the high damage unit here. But our main line saw little action at all because mostly the enemy main line was destroyed. That's how you determine your faction's weaknesses and strengths and how you work to better them. Just try to apply this to factions across the board. Every faction has different strengths and weaknesses that you have to cover the weaknesses and bolster the strengths. Each faction is different and requires different strategies to master, such as the Wood Elves being masters of skirmish and the Skaving using swarm tactics and meat shields. Each race and each faction has their own playstyle and powerful units. Learning this will allow you to create the best armies and master their tactics on the battlefield. My third tip is to always preview the battlefield and use terrain to your advantage. Now let's look at this little button right over here. Scout terrain. You hit this and it'll give you a pre-generated map of what you're going to do. So here, very favorable. The enemy will funnel their troops right through here and we could set up a kill zone right here and be able to take them out, especially for their warp fire throwers that are short range so they'll have to go through here. So this one would be very favorable to attack and we could do more damage with playing the battle than auto resolving. Auto resolving we could still have a decisive victory but scouting the terrain not only helps decide whether to do auto resolve or attack but also allows you to hope that you can get the best terrain and allows you to analyze because right here these little bumps up here show elevation so you can analyze where you're going to put your elevated machines if you have siege weaponry or where you're going to bait the enemy or if it's a choke point you just have to use the choke point that's how you scout the terrain really effective tool you'll be surprised how few total war players actually know about this or know how to read these scout terrain maps so that's this tip how to scout terrain now some factions this matters more than others for example any gunpowder heavy faction like the dwarves will have a distinct advantage on higher terrain as projectives can fire over infantry formations at the base of the elevation. However, elevation matters little to a faction such as high elves who don't use any gunpowder units and their powerful archers fire in an arc that can go over obstacles. Very important skill to learn if you want to play a faction that rely heavily on gunpowder or positioning. Positioning can be everything as well such as choke points. These can help turn the tide of a battle indefinitely as you can funnel the enemy's superior numbers into this choke point and use your superior firepower to take them down. Tip number four is having a well-balanced balanced army. And for a uh, well-balanced army, I bring you back to my Dwarven example here. So this is in the skirmish menu, but you can pretty much use any of these unit types. It doesn't matter what their tier is or anything, but to make a well-balanced army, you have a mixture of mainline troops, supporting troops. These could be these specialist hammerers here, or if you're playing a monstrous faction, they could have some special monster infantry, missile troops, meaning gunpowder lines, archers, artillery, if you are an artillery faction, any specialist units like a thunder barge here for aero superiority, or you could throw in gyrocopters or anything really flamethrowers troll hammer torpedoes you could throw heroes in as well to help amplify troops for instance if i took one of these hammerers out and added a engineer i would be able to buff up my artillery and missile troops to make them even more powerful so i'd be able to lean towards that strategy if i added in a runesmith i'd be able to take my runes and be able to buff up my whole army with uh, more armor to slow down the enemy rune speed for us a lot of different variables are between the units you bring and they work together with synergizing. Really good factions synergize together, like the dwarves. So learning to build a balanced army where you can counter any threat is imperative, especially if you're playing a faction like the dwarves. See, this army here could take on an infantry-heavy force really well because, you know, they have the thunderers to deal with damage. They have these guys to withstand the enemy's onslaught. They can deal with a cavalry-heavy force by using the hammerers to screen your thunderers and your vulnerable backline units, as well as forming these guys into a defensive wall with them. They can deal with enemy range units well because they can outrange them a lot with your artillery and thunderers can do a lot more damage as well as the thunder barge can harass the enemy range units so it's a nice dichotomy that you have to hit with designing your army this allows you to anticipate any situation that could happen in the campaign sometimes armies rely heavy on infantry could be stomped when they face monsters or missiles on the opposite if you totally forego a front line you could leave yourself open to counters by cavalry or heavy infantry balancing your army to an 
effective fighting force is integral to mastering Total War campaigns. Even though Doomstacks are fun, finding the perfect balance will be imperative to making a great campaign. Number five is to learn when it's best to use abilities on heroes, units, lords. It could be tempting to spam abilities and spells when you can try to get a damage boost, but I urge you to be sparing with your abilities as such you could leave yourself vulnerable when they're all on cooldown and your units could use support. This could be used to time spells and abilities to trap units and heroes in kill zones, keep units who have fleeing the flight, give that extra push to break through, or to pop some life-saving healing when you need it most once the enemy is tired. Learning to use these abilities at the best time will go a long way to turning the tide the way that it's supposed to. And you, my friend, can master it too. I urge you to familiarize yourselves with abilities and learn what it does and experiment to find out what the best way to use them. For example, using an armor up ability when an enemy unit is charging might help negate some damage, or using a heal after being in a prolonged fight might tip the balance in your favor. It's most useful, for instance, with Vlad. You can pop his Karstein ring just when he's about to take single entity damage, reducing that by 60%, saving it. It's imperative to learn timing in combat to use abilities to turn the tide. Finally, we come to my top tip. The best way to beat your enemies and to be ultimately prepared for whatever the game throws at you, whether it be AI or against your pals. You want to hear what it is? Give me a drum roll, please. It's tip number six. Use formations and strategies when you see opportunities, aka strategic sight. Having a strategy play book takes time, but learning to bring them to bear when you see opportunities requires alertness and a strategic mind. The most pivotal part of being a Total War master is to use established strategies and tactics when you see opportunities and learn to identify them. As we see here, it's imperative in battles to learn how to spot these opportunities to exploit them with these different tactics. You always have to analyze your surroundings in game to determine when it's effective to use certain strategies. This takes time to master, so don't get discouraged, strat fans. You gotta build up your own playbook and learn the skills to spot these openings, and believe me, they won't always be obvious. Above all else, learning to approach fights with this tactical state of mind will help you identify these openings and be able to exploit them for flanking maneuvers, setting up formations, baiting tactics, and even the old hammer and anvil. This is a skill that I can't implore more to you guys. It takes time to develop. I, myself, over the years of being a Total War veteran, have learned to identify these points. In every battle, there are these opportunities that just show up. You'll see these windows, and you have to take it. Just like in real warfare, if you miss your opening, then you could ruin your tactic. Or you could go for it, and something else comes out of the blue that you didn't anticipate and ruins it. So it's really kind of up to chance, too. But if you master your playbook, you can help to exploit these, the enemy leaving these opportunities open for you, and you'll be able to spot them like wildfire. So my biggest tip to you guys is have patience. Build up your playbook, and learn to see things strategically. To reiterate, mastering Total War games requires patience, adaptability, and above all else, strategic thinking. Remember, it's not just about winning battles, but about outsmarting your adversaries at every turn. Keep honing your skills, and victory will surely be within your grasp. Thank you for joining me on the Strategic Adventure. If you found these tips helpful and want a more in-depth strategy guys or gameplay tips, make sure to like this video, leave a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to my channel for future content. Together, we'll continue to conquer the battlefield with unwavering strategy and skill. Thanks for watching, Strat fans. Remember to always keep it strategic out there. Colonel out.